talking to you all because I'm doing something that is maybe, perhaps, risky behavior, but it's for the purposes of the book, and I can tell that a bit of a path has been made here anyway, and so <laughs> I'm going off the beaten path so I can see what it looks like when you get in the middle like this. Hello, I'm Lizelle Sambury. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things traditional publishing, writing, and a little bit of reading. And this is the September vlog. Um, I'm not doing my fancy calendar as I've done in the last couple of vlogs because I'm literally basically just going to be working on one thing <laughs> the whole month. Um, so I'm going to be working on doing edits for A Mastery of Monsters. So this is my first self-edit. Um, a Mastery of Monster is my young adult dark academia fantasy and now that the news is out that I <laughs> signed a book deal for this series, um, you can know that this is my series that's going to start coming out in 2025. Um, I have it planned as a trilogy. I've so far sold two books, so we'll see how that goes, but the first two will be out in 2025 and 2026. So right now I'm working on my first self-edit um, for my deadline, which is October 1st. Um, though my deadline actually got extended to October 15th, so I actually have extra time now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's my plan. Um, I also got a little bit because, uh, you know, I'm kind of how many days into the month? Anyway, um, there was a bit of a miscommunication thing, but essentially I have to do a presentation now. So I'm having to put together a presentation to talk about delicious monsters, basically kind of whatever I want. So I've just kind of decided it's going to be you know, sort of a loose, like, you know, this was my inspiration and research that I did. And, um, you know, this is what kind of the themes are in the book and like what the writing process was like. Um, and some of the bits I had the most fun writing, that sort of thing. So that's my plan. Um, I may or may not cut out the themes bit just because I know it's going to be, um, like students that are coming and I just wonder if like talking about themes is going to be boring for them <laughs> and if there's like something that's like more engaging that I might talk about considering the book um so I might choose to do that um but it's sort of like a field trip thing so I don't know maybe they want to talk about themes I don't know anyway I'm gonna figure that out um so I also have to work on that um that presentation is going to be at the end of the month so I have quite a bit of time um so I'm also going to be working on that this month. But the main priority is this self-edit of A Mastery of Monsters. Uh, so far it's going well and I'm pleased with my progress so far, but I know that's probably going to change because <laughs> right now I'm still within the first six chapters, which is the first act, um, which is also the chapters that I polished for my proposal to sell the book. And so I know they are the most polished chapters in the novel. <laughs> so um, yeah, I might have to, I, I just know it's going to be easier than like when I get further down the line and I have to do those chapters that I have not edited in any way at all. Um, but uh, as I've said in a previous vlog, when I read through it, I was surprised by like and how good shape it is. But uh, yeah, definitely probably a lot more work to be had in the future. Today is my first day that I'll be working on chapters that are not in the first act. So uh, yeah, it might be a longer work day for me today. Uh, but overall, I'm pleased with how everything is going. I think my only thing so far is I'm wondering if I need to pick up the pace of the first act and kind of make something more interesting happen. Um, I just wonder if it's just kind of not enough to grab you so far. Um, and I do think there's something like intriguing about it, but I wonder if it should have more. And I was thinking about you know, fantasies I've read. I was thinking specifically actually about Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. And I was thinking about that initial kind of scene where they have to cross the parapet, which is like, I guess like this narrow beam over this like deep chasm and it's like slippery and stuff and they have to walk across it. And 
it kind of created this action moment really early on in the book, which I do think was smart because I think it's good at like grabbing you and getting you engaged in it, um, especially for a book that has a lot of, you know, competition style things. And because my book also has a lot of competition style things, I was just wondering if I should have something that's a little bit more heart pumping <laughs> kind of in the first act. And there is something that happens in the prologue, but I just wondered if I needed something more and I have this scene where this monster uh, master of monsters monster kind of appears and then they kind of hide from it but then it just kind of disappears like not they don't really do anything um and so I'm kind of considering like having the monster kind of like take a run at them um is that a too Canadian phrase do people say that in other places like take a run at like I mean like like attack them <laughs> I actually don't know. I think that might be a very Canadian phrase, but maybe not. So I think because I have the extra deadline time and I like my plan was just to work until October 1st, I think chapters like this and things like this where I'm like, maybe I should rewrite this. I'm probably going to make note of. And then after I finish going through the book, going through the book, if I still feel like that, I'll go back and I'll rewrite those chapters in time for that extended deadline. So that I think is going to be my plan. Um, but that initial chapter, I really do think I'm going to do that because I think given the narrative, it probably does make more sense for it to kind of like go after them. Um, so yeah, I think that's gonna be my, yeah, it does make so much more sense. Sorry, I'm like working this out in my head as I'm talking. But anyway, um, that's the update for now and I will be back at some point. I thought I'd do a car update to break up the monotony of me being home. So here I am in the car. Um, I'm going to Fabricland, um, which I know I have an addiction to, but <laughs> this time I'm going because it's my mom's birthday at the end of the month. And I was like, what can I get her for her birthday? Um, and I keep, and I like got her an edible arrangement for her last birthday. So I didn't want to get it again. Um, and I wanted to kind of like maybe sew her something. And then um, I saw something. And because we are both couch queens, <laughs> we love to sit and watch a show. Um, I realized that I should make her a hoodie, which is like, I don't know if you've seen this or an Udi. What is it called online? Anyway, it's like a hood. It's like a giant blanket with a hood. Um, so I figured I'd make her that. So I'm coming to Fabricland to see what they have in the way of fleece and fabric. Um, and I'm only doing that. Uh, I've told myself, I was like, you need to start limiting the projects for which you buy new things every month. You can't help me buy new things for new projects every month. Anyway, so that's why I'm outside. But um, this week, as far as writing goes, has been good. I'm just plugging away on A Mastery of Monsters. Uh, I think it's coming along well. I think my where I'm trying to balance things is that this book has, it could potentially be so so long so so long but I don't want it to do that like to me like when we're when all is said and done I don't want this to be more than 150,000 words I I just don't <laughs> so that's kind of my goal um though right now I'm trying to keep it to 100,000 maximum so that's where I'm at but just because the world I've created for this is so giant <laughs> um and I know I wanted this to be three books um but I was like i I could probably go on for a while. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it is the way it is now just because. But anyway, I'm getting off track. 
the the world is very expansive and so i'm really trying to balance like the fact that my character is new and she's coming into this society brand new and so i want her to learn things but i because i want the reader to learn things too but i don't want her to get like bombarded and i know there are certain things that characters just like wouldn't talk about and they don't talk about to her because it's just like it's not relevant and it's really unnatural to be like this is everything and like explain everything so i think that makes sense too like some things are like very need to know basis um so i'm trying to balance that because i need her to learn stuff but i don't want to I don't want to bore the reader by having her like sit down with people and being like this is how the world works so I'm trying to do that naturally so that's a bit of a challenge but in terms of wins um I do feel like I'm succeeding at putting in more like cute moments and like connecting moments between the main character and the love interest um because I do want that to be built up and I felt like I did really well building up the relationship between the main character and like her like best friend like who's going to become her best friend? I've already, she's gonna have a lot of best friends actually but <laughs> this the one that's most main right now I feel like I've done well with her um but it's almost like she spends way more time with her than <laughs> she spends with the love interest so I was like I need to fix this so I'm just working on um fixing that and giving them more like cute moments to like build up that slow burn romance because this is a book where like for me this is like the most prominent romance I've had in any book and so I'm really really wanting to push that so to give them more cute moments and stuff so that's pretty much me um and the workload has been very very good for me um it is really my preference to work on one project at a time it just makes such a huge difference like I feel like I have so much time in the day to devote to it and I'll find myself later on in the day I'll have an idea and I'll go back and edit something because I have the energy <laughs> to do so and the time and that's going to continue on so I'm excited for that um I always just want to have that be my thing is to just work on one project at a time but again sometimes it really doesn't work out but anyway that's where I'm going to leave you for now I'm going to go and get this fabric I'm coming to you from inside my mom's onesie that I made her <laughs> not onesie hoodsie sorry hooded blanket that I made her and honestly it's very comfy it's extremely comfy it's also super warm and i might need to make my own <laughs> for myself <laughs> when fleece goes on sale because fleece is expensive it's very expensive so when it goes on sale i might have to make my own but it's fully reversible so she can wear it the gray side or the yellow side whichever one she wants and uh it was kind of it's a little bit annoying to make <laughs> A little bit annoying but it's mostly just like time consuming um and I had to kind of take a few a little bit to figure out what stitches I should be using and I had to hand sew a bit and I hate hand sewing so much but it's very very nice I do think the pocket is a little bit too oversized but I don't know I could make a smaller pocket for myself but I kind of need to make my own so we'll see I also have a bunch of leftover fleece from the yellow not enough to like make a second one of these because <laughs> it uses quite a bit of fabric but enough to potentially make some matching booties i don't know if i'll have time to also make those before her birthday so i might just save them for christmas but i mean i'm into it i'm into it
getting to the point in this book, which I get to in every single one of my books, where I start to second guess absolutely everything <laughs> that I have done. And I think it's just because, I don't know, I feel like it still feels kind of first drafty, even though I'm doing a second draft. But I think my big thing that I keep spinning over in my head is if it's too slow, if it feels too slow, because I have this competition mechanic, I have these games. And so the way I have it set up now is there's preliminaries, there's trainings, we hit the midpoint, that's kind of around the time that we get the first cut um, of like the first, or really the second cut, the second chunk of like competitors that are cut from the competition. And then after the midpoint, we start doing the actual games. So we have three tests, we have another cut, and then we have a kind of finals. And I'm wondering if the fact that in the first half we have those trainings, which are not really like something that's like dangerous. Um, well, they are kind of dangerous, but like they're fine. Um, it's a bit of a kid's glove situation so that they can actually, you know, train and that sort of thing. And I find myself getting caught up in like, is that going to make it seem too slow? And I don't know, but I think of other like competition books, like I think of mm, The Hunger Games as the giant one. And I was like, you know, they really just jump into that, but they actually don't. So they jump into the reaping. And I actually think my first act, especially when I go back and edit that initial chapter, I feel like that's going to be action packed enough to like pull readers in. Um, but then it slows down a bit. They have their moments on the train, um, going to the Capitol. They do the parades and the interviews they do their trainings like they do a few things in the capital before they actually get to the games i don't know when that point they get to the games is i keep wanting <laughs> i wanted to rebind some copies of the hunger games because i used to have hardcover copies. i don't know i had this moment where i was like i don't know like in my early 20s where I decided I needed to get rid of all of my books and I got rid of a ton of books including my Hunger Games books and now I'm too obsessed with having the perfect set so I keep not buying my own copies so I can't tell at one point that starts but also I think of more recently uh Fourth Wing and I mean they're doing competitions as well but they kind of do like a lot of sparring and stuff in the beginning like i feel like it's not until quite a bit later on when they even get dragons and so it also has that kind of like set up training period so i don't know i think for some people that doesn't work but i also think of you know my own books of like blood like magic and i feel like it wasn't like breaknet everything in danger in the first half either but I think I just I don't know if that's bad or not <laughs> I don't know if I should be having some more like actual like danger points in between I don't know if I need to ramp up those preliminaries or whatever to actually make them more dangerous I don't know I'm gonna post this to my editor when I send over my stuff and to just be like do you feel like we need more in these parts I don't know. I think I'm so, because I'm cognizant of the fact that my books are long, I feel like recently I've become very obsessed with like having enough exciting, heart pounding things to like keep people gripped into the book such that like it doesn't matter as much if it's long, but it's so personal preference. Like I even, you know, a book like Delicious Monsters, which I do myself, I think is slower paced. You know, people on my uh, publishing team thought it was faster paced because stuff was happening and they were intrigued and stuff but that's a very like intrigue heavy book like there's not necessarily all these action things happening in the first half but it's very heavy on like what is going on here and like something's wrong here and I don't know I think that's just my I'm just like I'm a little bit hung up on it but I'm plowing through anyway <laughs> And I'm also trying to keep in mind how I've handled a large cast before because it's a very large cast of characters and some of the characters I'm introducing in this first book like I've already like they have arcs way past this book <laughs> and so I'm just giving like a little taste of them and I think because I know that they're going to become more prominent it feels like I'm underserving them but I actually don't think I am. Um, so that's also something I'm working with, like trying to balance this. Um, I am pumping up the romance, but I'm starting to be like, oh, I don't know, like, I don't know, like sometimes it'll go like three or four chapters without the dude being in the chapter. And I'm like, is that bad? But I don't know, maybe it's fine <laughs> because 
I mean, this is like, to me, this is a fantasy with romance. This is I don't know it, what it'll get marketed as because I know romanticy is big. So like, if you see it getting marketed that way, it is what it is. Um, but I do think of it as like a fantasy with romance, but I want more romance than I did in the blood like series. And so I'm trying to make that more of a thing. I don't know. I think I just like am just in an overthinking phase where I'm just like overthinking absolutely everything I put into this book. And I know it's so unnecessary because I did that the first time I wrote this book and I was like, this is terrible. And then I read it back and I was like, I actually really like this. So I don't know. But anyway, those are just my off the dome thoughts and what I'm kind of like, what is it circling in my mind right now? Take a look out the window. Spirit goes up as the rain falls down. I've been sitting on the wrong course. Keep it together like I did before. Think that I've said this a few times. Even with that, has it ever felt right? I swear that this has happened every moment. Can I just be honest? I was only wondering, and maybe we could take it to a different conversation. Things will get uncomfortable, but only if we make it. I just wanna say that. But you'd rather take it all back. Although you are sunlight, you stay in the shade. I'm dancing in a corner. Just again in space Cause I wanna believe that Ooh, I get lost You go with your day Slowly get closer But you're moving away I know it's just a recap But I'm sure you'll never see that I'd rather take it all back Maybe it's time to get home Think that home from Toronto. I went to Toronto to both go to the Hosier concert and to celebrate my friend's birthday, which were both great. Um, the Hosier concert, oh, so good, <laughs> which I also went with my friend who had the birthday. Um, man, yeah, it was just awesome. He just sounded exactly like the record, but like also better. <laughs> which sometimes, you know, you like sometimes you go and see someone live and they just like they just don't sound the way that the record sounds like it's just it's a different thing but he was like it was like exact exact so that was amazing he also like it was also like which sometimes happens at concerts for me which i enjoy is he like played a song that i had heard off the new album but i hadn't really thought too much about it but like once i heard it live i was like oh that one is really good and now i'm obsessed with it and now i'm obsessed with it um it is who we are by hoser in case you wanted to know which song it was they didn't play shrike which is like, you know, that's like my jam. That's the song that like inspired a bunch of delicious monster stuff. And like, oh, I also got a tattoo. I forgot about that. I got a tattoo. I'll flash the picture that my uh, tattoo artist put on on their Instagram. I'll flash it on screen because right now the tattoo is covered in second skin. Um, so you can't see it, but I got it. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Um, I got it done by Vegas. Um, of true tattoo um they also did my sorrow flower on my back and it was just like oh it's just amazing it's beautiful i got a butcher bird slash a shrike um and then i got some blueberries and daisies and like foliage around um to yeah it's basically like a, a representation of delicious monsters to me um in that sort of form but uh, yeah they just did an amazing job originally i was gonna get in color um but they did like all these just like amazing black and white details and like the thing was like only some things would have been color and it would have been overwhelmed by like green because like the actual butcher bird is like white and gray um and black and so it just like it, it looks better in black and white so i'm very happy so i <laughs> got that done it was much less painful than the tattoo I got on my back. The tattoo on my back, like I honestly, I was like, this is the worst pain of my life. 
<laughs> and I was like, I don't know, I don't want to say traumatized because I don't want to like trivialize trauma, but it was like, I had to wait a year. I had to wait over a year to get another tattoo because I was like, I need time to forget how horrific that was for me. Um, but this one was like way better. And I think it's just the placement. I just think the arm is just like not as painful as the back for me. I also like <laughs> not to like to my own horn and like be like, I'm so metal. But I did like when they were doing the back, I did like drift off to sleep for a moment, um, which I didn't think was possible. And I know people have talked about that doing that sometimes during tattoos, but I was like, how could you do that? I was like, that's not real. And then that's exactly what happened. But I had a really early flight and I'm so tired. <laughs> Um, and I was laying on my front for them to do kind of the back-ish part of my arm. Um, yeah, no, wild, wild. Um, but I had a good time. I also read the book, um, uh, what is it called? Several people are typing. Um, I flashed up on the screen. I forget the author right now, so I probably shouldn't have talked about the book, but I thought it was so fun. It's just like a fun satire book about this guy that gets stuck in Slack. So like he like, his he his like mind gets stuck in slack and his like coworkers it's it's a whole thing it's a whole thing but i really enjoyed it and that's what i read during the five hour tattoo appointment but anyway um <laughs> i'm back from toronto writing wise what did i get done while i was there i was kind of worried because i was traveling that i might not be able to stick to my goals that i set out but i actually did i 100 percent did i did all of the writing that i had set out which was great um but i'm finding what i'm doing <laughs> more and more with a mastery of monsters that I really didn't expect is I keep rewriting whole chapters. So set out for this, I like had to add in like five, yeah, about five-ish chapters I had to add to the book. So I knew that that was going to happen. So I knew I'd be drafting those, but I was like, oh, I'm going to edit everything else. But I kept coming across chapters where I was like, they should do this or they should do this or they should do this and then I kept rewriting them so for example um there's a chapter where because I hadn't thought of the character's birthday because I never think of character's birthdays but I made a calendar and I was like Liz I'll put in the birthdays because it's gonna take place over multiple years and it's gonna be weird if you never talk about anyone's birthday so I was like fine so I put in the character's birthday and there was a date that just like fell close to the birthday where they were gonna do kind of like a party thing so I was like oh I'll just make it her birthday party so then I did that but that required that I basically like rewrote the chapter to make it her birthday party and then I realized there was a chapter that happened in between Halloween but they didn't talk about Halloween and I was like so I was like if you were like if your university is Halloween you're gonna do something so I made it a Halloween party so then I had to rewrite it to make it a Halloween party and then I realized I could put in some of the more minor characters that like I know are going to become more major later on and like give them a bit more presence in the book so I was like okay they can hold the Halloween party and so then I did that and then I wanted to make more opportunities for romance and that's something that keeps happening too I want to like make a little bit more opportunity for romance so then I keep writing stuff and so suffice to say what this means is that the book is much more rough than it was supposed to be <laughs> like this self edit was supposed to make it a polished second draft and what it is more like is like a second first draft that's very much what it feels like it feels like a second first draft um and there's nothing wrong with that because I feel like I'm getting out what I need to get out and this deadline is for a first draft but because my editor extended the deadline Originally, I was like, oh, I can do a read through. And then I was like, that's too much work because I also have to work on the couples retreat. But then I was just like, I need to do it. So I've decided to push down editing the couples retreat so that I can take the extra two weeks to do a thorough read through and polish of the manuscript. And I, this is also doubly important to me because my agent um, is wanting to submit the book to UK publishers. And we decided that she'd kind of take a look at the first complete polished draft and that it might be better to just send that to UK publishers instead of sending a proposal um, because then we'll have the polish draft. So why not? And I also kind of want to give it the best shot in that case. And so I think it might go better if I then take the time to do a really good polish of it. So at least they're getting like my most polished 
self draft um, when it gets sent off to the UK. So that's kind of my feeling right now is why I want to take that time, but also because I have the time. So why not take it? And there's no timeline on the couples retreat. Like, sure, I have an arbitrary goal of I want to go on submission in January of next year, but it's it's an arbitrary goal. So I was like, if I have to move it around, I can move it around. I my income is good for 2024. I'm like cool. So I don't need to rush trying to get the couples retreat ready for sell for sale sorry i was like i have lots of time so i'd rather push the couples retreat off use the time that i have considering that it has no deadline to get a much sharper draft of a mastery of monsters to send off to my editor and potentially to send off to sensitivity readers if we send off that draft to them instead of the next draft. But usually when we do sensitivity readers, we send off the second draft, I think, is what we've done in the past. I don't know. I'll check with my editor. But I was just like, I'd rather just do all of that and like get a much cleaner version. So that's what I'm doing right now. That is kind of my plan going forward. But I will still finish the editing at the end of the month, which I'm excited about. So yeah. And now it's time for a book haul because I went to Toronto and of course I bought a bunch of books because of course, and it's so funny because before I went, I was like, I probably won't buy that many books. I don't really think there's a lot of books that I want. Anyway, so um, I went to two really cool bookstores that I'm going to talk about. So the first was The Beguiling, I believe it's called, and it's a comic book shop. And I went there the last time I was in Toronto and bought a bunch of graphic novels. So I went there again and bought a graphic novel because I love it. I love the vibe there. They have all sorts of not just graphic novels, but they have like manga and art books and zines. And they have like an adult section and then they also separately have like a YA middle grade section though some of it is also mixed up together um and I love that it's just like they've got great displays they're super helpful really nice staff big fan um and that's on it's like college in Spadina so I went there and then I also went with my friend to Little Ghosts books um or Little Ghosts just Little Ghosts um but anyway it is a horror um, indie bookstore in Toronto. Um, it's just above Trinity Bellwoods Park on Dundas, but I don't know what the other intersection is and I don't want to guess in case I'm wrong. So I'll just link the bookstores below. Um, but I'd never been there and I'd seen someone go on TikTok and I meant to go, but then I just like hadn't gotten around to it in my previous trips, but I was staying at an Airbnb in Trinity Bellwoods. So then I was like, oh, it's right there. So we went and it was awesome. It's just such a beautiful space it's super cool um they have like a little cafe there also and they have like a patio area um and we like talked with the bookseller that was working there about like different horror books and stuff and like ones we liked and i eventually wheeled around to being like i'm an author and i write books because i uh they didn't have my books in stock there and so usually if somebody doesn't have well even if they had my books in stock i probably would have introduced myself but like it's good to introduce yourself, especially if they don't have your books in stock, to kind of just be like, hey, this is me and I exist and maybe you'd like to stock my books one day. <laughs> um, so we had a really great conversation about that. Um, and so I will be checking with my publicist slash the bookstore to see if maybe we can do an event there one day. Um, just because I think that would be really cool because it was just like such an awesome, nice space and vibe and stuff. Um, so yeah, stay tuned on that. We'll see if we can do that. Um, but we will get into the book haul now. So the first book I have, um, this is the only one that's a novel um, that the bookseller recommended to me when I was in Little Ghost, which I have seen this book all over booktube, but I wasn't sure about picking it up. So then I just like had it. But because we had like, you know, we had chatted about a few horror books and I felt like they had a good idea of my vibe of book taste. And so I took the recommendation and I bought it. So it's Mayfly by CJ Lead. Um, it's about like a girl who's not Elsa that works at not Disneyland, um, but she's pretty much Elsa and she works at Disneyland. Um, and all I've kind of heard about it is that it's got like, I don't know, like sh something goes on with her. Something goes on with her. Um, and that's kind of all I know about it. And I'm happy to only know that about it. Um, so that's the only book I got. And the rest are graphic novels. Uh, so I got Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me. Um, this is, I believe it's a young adult. Um, and yeah, it is because it was in the Y section. It's a young adult. Um, so by Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell. Um, and I've read um, 
graphic novels by Mariko Tamaki before. So, and I've seen this one around a lot. So I was kind of like, okay, this is like, I'm trying to make it focus better. I was like, this is like a good reason to pick it up. So I picked it up. Um, I don't know what it's about. So I'm just telling you why I picked these up. If you're not used to my book hauls, uh, I don't know a lot about a lot of the books that I pick up and that's the energy that I bring to these. So just kind of telling you why they caught my eye because otherwise we'll be here forever and it'll be a whole separate video. Um, I got Ghost Book by Remy Lai, um, who I follow on Instagram actually. Um, and I saw that she was writing a middle grade horror and like, look at how, look at the cool holographic. Um, the only thing I know about it is about ghosts. So, uh, she seems to have a ghost friend and I'm on board with that. So <laughs> that's why I got it. Um, and then I got the graphic novelization of Speak by Laurie Hulse Anderson. Um, and the artwork is by Emily Carroll. Um, I know Emily Carroll from her other graphic novel work. And so I meant to pick this up. I actually realized after I bought this that I pre-ordered the paperback of it. So yeah, now I have to. <laughs> But anyway, I saw it and I was like, I'm going to get it. Um, I don't believe I ever actually ended up reading Speak the Novel, which I really should. But I also jumped on the graphic novelization because I was like, it's here. So um, that's what I got it. Um, I don't know how to describe Speak, but it's a very popular, well-known novel um, dealing with uh, themes of sexual assault. So yeah, graphic novelization. And then I got Spinning by Tilly Walden. Um, I have a few Tilly Walden graphic novels now. Are you focusing better? There you go. <laughs> I have a few Tilly Walden graphic novels by now, so I'm pretty much just kind of jumping on every Tilly Walden I see. And so I know this is one that I wanted to get to, but yeah, contemporary about ballet, which like, I will say like my graphic novel taste is very, very different <laughs> from my novel taste. Um, so, cause I usually don't read a lot of contemporary books. Um, but I will in graphic novel if I read a time. And then we have Seconds by Brian Lee O'Malley, who did the Scott Pilgrim graphic novels. And so that's that's why I picked it up because I was like, oh, I, you know, I'm kind of curious about what he's done that isn't Scott Pilgrim. So I figured I would get it. Um, and it's about like a like filmmaker. No, 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 she doesn't. She runs a restaurant. Yeah, she's a chef and she runs a restaurant. That's all I know about it. And then Finally, I got the Oja Woja Woja. Yeah, that sounds right. That rhymes. The Oja Woja um, by Magdalene Vis Visaggio and Jen St. Ange. So I got this one because it just kind of like, I don't know, I thought it had a really cool cover. And then it was, uh, it said on the back, it said a story about the transformative power of friendship and an immortal demon trying to take over the world, but mostly the friendship thing. And I was like, that's the voice. That's a, that's a voice that I like <laughs> to read and that I like in fiction. And so the voice jumped off the page to me. It said it was a horror mystery or whatever on the front. And I was like, yep, I'm, I'm there for it. And I believe this is middle grade, um, potentially it was in the middle grade section. So I figure it's middle grade, but, um, yeah, that is the whole haul. Um, sorry if you think that I do more formal hauls. I don't at all. I'm just showing you the book and the very loose reasons that <laughs> led me to purchase it. I can be very easily convinced. And, uh, I used to try and make myself be the sort of person that like carefully read synopses and like consider books. But then I was just like, no, nope, I just want to pick based on vibes. I've heard about it. Sometimes I'm looking for something specific and I can just kind of see a few buzzwords on a cover and be like, good to go. Um, and that's how I choose books. And because I'm an author and I can write books off, I have no control anymore. And I just do what I want. So anyway, see you later. Take it.
Talking to you all because I'm doing something that is maybe, perhaps, risky behavior, but it's for the purposes of the book, and I can tell that a bit of a path has been made here anyway, and so <laughs> I'm going off the beaten path so I can see what it looks like when you get in the middle like this. And I'm hoping <laughs> there's nothing like bears or something. I don't know. Hold on. So this is what it looks like. So it's like a little bit more open. I can see that there's like houses on the other side over there. But this is kind of an interesting empty place. So we're off the beaten path. <laughs> which I would like almost never do, especially when I'm here by myself. And I guess I technically didn't tell anyone I was coming. Wow, this is like, <laughs> this is some horror movie main character foolishness that I'm doing right now. But I'm doing it for the sake of a master of monsters. So if you read this book, I hope that you'll appreciate all of this. Um, but yeah, so I am in the marshlands um, for a Mastery Monsters. I needed a like wooded sort of area, but like in Kingston on the mainland. <laughs> um, and so I googled some places and this seemed like suitable, but I wasn't, I had already left Kingston. So I couldn't really <laughs> like come here and I didn't really know what it was actually like to be here. So since I'm here for the Kingston's Writers Festival, I was like, I have to come to the marshlands. I just want to scope it out. I want to see if it makes sense the way I've done it in the book. Like, could it really work? Because like, I have like monsters fighting in here. <laughs> and I was like, how? I was like, I know it's fiction. You suspend disbelief a little bit, but I was like, okay, but like, could I make it so monsters could fight here? Um, and I mean, I kind of think I could. I think I need to adjust the heights of the monsters. I think I'm making them too tall. Um, but I don't know, these are really tall trees and I'm a short person, so it's hard for me to tell. But anyway, so I walked off the beaten path <laughs> and into the trees to get here, but it's really like, it's really nice. It's really good. It's like really beautiful. I know I'm not a nature person, um, <laughs> but this is like a really, really gorgeous area and I could totally see this working and like they go off the beaten path to do this fighting so I was like they could totally do it they could totally run through here this could absolutely work I'm not gonna go full off the beaten path if I was here with my boyfriend I would <laughs> because it's just me I was like absolutely not absolutely not not me with my black ass going out <laughs> into the wilderness I haven't told anyone where I am absolutely not but um yeah so I'm gonna go back to the path and like show you a little bit more of uh the marshlands on the other side of here just a golf course just an ordinary golf course <laughs> which is funny but this is where it leads and it goes down into some sort of dark area but uh there's a massive friggin caterpillar there massive and as you can see from my short time here i already got like fucking bit by something so i'm outy i'm out and getting the fuck out <laughs> i'm also starting to like freak myself out because I'm here by myself and I didn't realize this path would be like so narrow and so like closed in like this. <laughs> so, you know, I have anxiety. <laughs> so I'm getting the fuck out of here. I'm getting the fuck out of here. I saw what I needed to see. It's going to work for the book. <laughs> and 
and I can come back another time <laughs> when my <laughs> boyfriend is with me who can, uh, you know, help me, <laughs> help soothe my anxiety um, as he is an actual nature person and outdoorsman um, and I'm not, so. <laughs> Hello, hello, welcome to the end of the vlog. It is September 30th, um, which is also the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation in Canada, um, also known as Orange Shirt Day, which is to honor the survivors of residential schools, to remember those children that didn't get to come home, and to really move towards reconciliation um, and all of that and really acknowledging everything and learning. <laughs> now I'm getting to learn much more things from an indigenous perspective. And of course, as you know, bodies have been discovered, um, remains have been discovered, the truth about residential schools has become a lot more salient in Canada. And so I just wanted to acknowledge that, acknowledge, you know, how it's important to learn about those things. And even if you're not in Canada, <laughs> um, I'm sure you have an indigenous population where you live um, that you can always learn more about. And so that's something that I've been really trying to work on because it was honestly embarrassing the amount of things I just like didn't know at all. And I'm living on indigenous people's land, so I should know about them. Anyway, so <laughs> that's what today is. Um, and it is also the end of the month. It is the end of my time at the Kingston Writers Fest. Um, so I figured I'll just kind of wrap everything up for you. Um, I cannot remember the last like actual progress update I did. So I apologize in advance if I miss anything, <laughs> but I'm gonna try and get over the Kingston Writers experience, um, a Mastery of Monsters updates, um, and a Delicious Monsters update. And I think that'll cover everything. Um, so what did I say the first? Kingston Writers Fest. Um, so I did a presentation about Delicious Monsters. I was very nervous because I'm always very nervous about presentations. Um, and it was during the field trip portion of the festival, which is like um, they have a bunch of students from um, high schools in the area come in. And I think maybe also middle schools. I'm not really sure. Um, come in and listen to us do these presentations and so uh, they came in and I did that and they got to ask questions. I was really happy that they had a lot of questions <laughs> so that was good. I'm um, just kind of about all sorts of stuff in general about you know titles of the books and um, talking about audiobook narrators and talking about like what sort of like books do I read and also a little bit about Blood Like Magic because one student kind of wanted to know what sort of sci-fi it was since I was talking about Delicious Monsters so I only talked about Blood Like Magic kind of briefly but it was just like it, I really appreciated it. I'm always really really excited to get to interact with teens because that's who I'm writing for <laughs> and in my everyday life I'm not really interacting with a bunch of teenagers um, and so I always find it really exciting to get to have that interaction moment with them and to answer questions and things like that so that was really great super super positive I had a wonderful experience um, I've had a wonderful experience overall <laughs> at the festival I really appreciate that I was invited and that I got to come here um, it was just, you know, and for me, it's like, I guess, like, especially sentimental because I, my university is here. So I went to university in Kingston. So I lived here for like four years. Um, and I find it is always, you know, it has a special place in my heart, if you will. So it was really exciting to get to come back as a writer. Um, 
And yeah, I just had a wonderful time. I also got to listen to some great talks as well, um, which was fantastic because I stayed uh, a little bit extra time after I did my event. Um, so I was able to like go to other people's events, which was really nice because sometimes you're like so in and out that you like <laughs> kind of don't have time to like do stuff. Um, so that was really wonderful and I had a really positive experience. And then a master of monsters. So I have finished my revision um which is really exciting to have gotten to like finish the revision here because the book is set in kingston it's set at queens so that was really exciting um yeah i just kind of like not yesterday thursday i was just kind of like i had extra time i was feeling good <laughs> and i was like i had finished my presentation too and I was just like I was energized and I was like I'm gonna try and bang out this book so I went to a coffee shop and I did extra work and I was able to finish the revision this isn't the end of me working on a mastery of monsters because um, my deadline got increased so I'm gonna take an extra two weeks to read through because the thing is like <laughs> I ended up rewriting so much of this book I didn't realize how much rewriting I was gonna do but I would get to chapters and I would be like, this should be set here or this should be set here or I should add this or I should do this. Um, very on the fly. Um, and I spent so much time plotting out this revision plan and I feel like I just like ended up going so off the wall with it <laughs> anyway. So suffice to say the whole book feels so rough. It feels really, really rough. And so I'm glad to get to do this read through because I really want to do like a good clean line edit. Um, and I also need to like adjust some character things because I was adjusting it on the fly and I don't think it totally flows the way I want it to flow. So I'm going to try and do both and see how that goes. And so I'll be pushing off working on my adult thriller so I can have more time to do that. But so yeah, but uh, very excited about how the book has come together. I'm pleased with the ending. I feel like it's got like, you know, it's got a very good mix of like female rage and like <laughs> intrigue. And like, I find that the kind of epilogue of the book makes you rethink kind of a bunch of stuff that happened in the book, which I really like um, and gets you excited for the sequel because I think that's the big thing about this book and working on a series when I know it's a series I think the thing with blood like magic is because I was selling my first book and when you sell it I was like with series potential so I didn't know that anyone would pick it up as a series and so I wrote it to stand alone I wrote it where it could feel like a standalone and not really because it's not really the ending that I would want to leave anyone on but it feels very complete in that way whereas like a mastery of monsters i'm setting up things that are like not gonna come until like the third book and so i have to kind of like breadcrumb it in but i can't fully answer it at that point but i think that's okay because i know it's a series and so there's like something set up where people are like okay i'm gonna see that in the next book but i think that'll be a balance too because you don't want to do too much of that and then have people be annoyed that they're not <laughs> learning about stuff right away so yeah, very excited about A Mastery of Monsters. I also, because I was here in Kingston, I need to adjust some things because there's some things I saw like around the city where I was like, oh, I need to fix that. That's wrong in the book. This is wrong in the book. Um, yeah, just, just research things. And that's why I was like, I really need to come back here repetitively so I can deep dive into stuff. I'm also considering contacting the creative writing department and seeing if there are any students that might be interested in being interviewed i don't know i don't know if i'm actually going to do that or not or if i'm going to need to do that or not um we'll see we will see <laughs> but that is master of monsters and then finally the big delicious monsters update um you if you follow me on any other social media you would have already seen but delicious monsters is the barnes and noble ya october monthly pick which is like yay that's my no, it's not my last secret. I'm sorry. I was going to be like, that's the last secret I am keeping. And then I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> but that is a big secret I was keeping. Um, so I'm very excited about that. Um, and that is essentially kind of if you so let me circle back to this. Usually what happens in traditional publishing is you release your hardcover or like not usually, but like oftentimes you release your hardcover and then a year later your paperback comes out. Whereas I released my hardcover for Delicious Monsters 
at the end of February, and now the paperback has come out at the end of September. And essentially, the reason for why we released the paperback early is because Barnes and Noble asked if we could um, for the purposes of kind of being the monthly pick. And we were like, okay, yeah, because it's worth it. Um, <laughs> It's worth it to release the paperback early um, in order to kind of have them be like, yeah, okay, we can, we'll do it as the monthly pick for October, um, which is not like you don't have to have a paperback book to be a monthly pick. I think the idea was just kind of like it, you know, it's a new, it makes it feel new again, I guess, um, because it's like a re-release in its own way, I suppose. But anyway, um, so that's why the paperback has come out early. Um, and just so you know, the Delicious Monsters paperback, it has the bonus short story um, from the POV of Grace, who is Daisy's um, mom. Um, and we also have the sneak peek of Tender Beasts. And this is really exciting because usually, because the paperback doesn't come out till a year later, and your and my next book would also be <laughs> pretty much a year later from the other one. Usually by the time you get that sneak peek of the next book, the next book is already out. But in this case, Tender Beasts won't be out for a while. So if you pick up the paperback of Delicious Monsters, you will get a sneak peek of Tender Beasts before it has even come out. Um, something that you wouldn't get access to otherwise unless you had an arc of Tender Beasts. Um, and I still don't know when those are being sent out. <laughs> so, But yeah, so I think that's really exciting too because you can get a very early look at the next book. Um, and so yeah, so if you're in the US, I recommend going out to your local Barnes & Noble and grabbing a paperback. Um, and I will say, because somebody asked me this, that is in all of the paperbacks everywhere. So even if you are living, say, in Canada and you buy the paperback, you'll also get access to all of that bonus content. So, But very, very exciting news. I'm very excited to have been able to share that. Um, yeah, yeah, so very excited. So I'm really only keeping one secret now, which I don't know when that will ever come to light. But uh, but yeah, all in all, I had a wonderful month, um, more traveling than I usually do, <laughs> but it was all really good. And yeah, I'm just excited to share that all with you. Um, and I will see you next month in October. I almost said November, October um, for uh, spooky season for Halloween and which I will still be working on a mastery of monsters, but I will also should be able to get started on the edits for my adult thriller, the couples retreat. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and thank you so much for watching. Bye. Cruising through the night.